I was in the 11th grade. There was a nightclub not far from the school where we often went on weekends with friends. After the club, we usually went to the schoolyard, sit on a bench, chat, etc. That night, I was there with my boyfriend, who later became my husband. We drank beer and chatted. There was a large and old tree growing in the schoolyard. Casually glancing there, I shuddered. There was a man standing under the tree. I nudged the guy in the side and pointed at the silhouette. We are not doing anything wrong, he shouted, thinking that this was a watchman who often patrolled the territory, checking that no one was brawling and littering. The man did not answer, just stood silently and sometimes moved slightly. It got a little scary. Finally, my faithful man took courage and decided to approach the man, find out what he needed. Leaving me alone on the bench, he headed for the tree. Halfway there, I heard a slight scream with a foul language. I won't type what. What happened? I asked. Come here quickly, the guy replied. I went up to him and realized his surprise. There was no one under the tree. Puzzled, we walked back to the bench. Looking at the tree again, now I exclaimed, Look, he's back there! We decided to see what it was all about. As I approached, I began to notice that the figure was clearly not male. Long hair and smallness were clearly discernible. But halfway there, the silhouette disappeared. Moreover, it did not disappear into the fog, as in the movies. But, as it were, you blink, and it is gone. We ran in silence, our heels glittering, but no longer towards the tree, but away from it. Later, I remembered with horror that when I came to transfer from another school, going into the hall, I saw a table on which there was a portrait of a girl with a black ribbon in the corner. I didn't ask anyone anything at the time, but now I'm thinking. I talked to the biology teacher, my favorite subject, and he told me that the 10th grade students, having decided to skip class, were waiting for the bell under this tree. I must say right away that the winters are harsh here and the weather was far from positive. Later, one of the girls whose portrait was in the hall died of meningitis. Grinning, he told me that he walks among the students, that allegedly this girl, standing under a tree and freezing, kept repeating, I wish there was a call and now she's standing there under a tree and waiting for the bell and she'll never leave there because who would want to give a call at night? My mother was in the third grade at the time. The school where she studied still stands on the outskirts of the village. There are only 12 classrooms. The school also has a basement where all sorts of school stuff is stored. In the year when my mother moved to the third grade, Uncle A got a job as a watchman at their school. Naturally, I don't know him, but according to my mother, he was a strong man, friendly. One morning, when my mother came to school, she did not find A, who usually sat on watch in the morning, at the place. The teachers behaved strangely, and the lessons were cut in half. The fact was that the watchman disappeared from his place of work during his night shift, leaving his belongings at school. They searched for him for a week. They were already considered missing. And one day during school, screams and screams were heard. The cleaning lady found it in the basement. Lessons were canceled. The next day it became known that the door to the basement was closed from the outside, which means that the watchman, having entered the basement, did not close the door. Someone else did it. They say that horror was reflected on his face. Some said it was done by someone from the village. Others said it was done by evil spirits. The culprits were never found. Apparently everyone had an alibi. The most interesting thing happened in the year of mom's education already in the fourth grade. Then there was no longer a watchman. There was a duty officer who stayed overnight at school until the arrival of the first teacher. It happened just on the night of A's disappearance. The attendant left the place of work with all her belongings without waiting for the teacher. It 
turned out that at night, she heard screams coming from the basement and left school. Naturally, no one believed it. Mom moved to the fifth grade. The attendant changed, and on the night of that day, the same thing happened. The same screams. Then the school basement and the whole school itself were consecrated. There have been no such incidents since then. The murder was not solved. It's been about 20 years now, and no screams from the basement are heard there anymore. When I first moved into the old dormitory, I had a strange feeling that the whole atmosphere of this place was saturated with something unknown. My room, located in the far corner of the upper floor, seemed to be a place where time had frozen in some ancient era. From the very beginning, I felt that I was not alone in this room. An invisible presence stood in the air, making the hairs on my arms stand on end. The room was constantly cold, even when the summer warmth reigned outside. The smell of antiquity and some indefinable rot has never left me. From the first nights, strange noises began. Barefoot footsteps in the hallway, ghostly tapping on the wall, as if someone was knocking, trying to convey some kind of message to me. I tried to explain it to myself, but the longer I stayed in this dorm, the more incomprehensible things became. At night, I often woke up to strange whispers, despite the fact that the room was empty. The glowing eyes in the corner of the room flickered, disappearing as soon as I directed my gaze at them. It seemed like this place had a mind of its own, hiding in the shadows. Having decided to solve the mystery, I went on a night investigation. Meeting with a door that suddenly opened in front of me, I found myself in a forgotten corner of the dormitory. Old photographs and dusty documents revealed a story forgotten by time. I recognized my own face in one of the photos, but in a picture that was apparently taken many years ago. This place once belonged to someone else, whose soul seems to have remained within these walls, trying to convey its story. It turned out that this someone needed help. The whispers and footsteps became more pronounced, as if calling me for help. I decided to reveal the secrets of this hostel, freeing the soul that had been wandering its corridors for many years. But even after I helped this soul find peace, the shadow of the old dormitory continued to live its walls continued to store untold stories and secrets, attracting new residents into their arms.